Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise for the President of the Republic of Botswana, His Excellency Dr. Mokwesi Eric Chavetsu Masisi, and the First Lady of the Republic of Botswana, Mrs. Jane Masisi. Ladies and gentlemen, I kindly request you to remain standing for the national anthem of the Republic of Botswana. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, give a warm welcome for the Director of Ceremony for the Diamond Conference 2019, Ms. Tirelo Ramasedi. Ladies and gentlemen, the De Beers Group values the health and safety of its people above all else, and this includes you and I this morning. With an aim of zero harm, the De Beers Group ensures to put safety first, and I therefore request for your utmost attention as I take you through a safety briefing. Emergency exit doors, we Puso Hall, which is the hall that we are in currently, has a total of five emergency exit doors. There are two at the rear of the hall, two on my right, your left, and one on my left, which is your right. Emergency assembly point. Kindly note that the emergency assembly point is located just outside the main entrance of the building where registration uh, was occurring. In case of any emergency, Delegates are requested to converge at the assembly point. Emergency medical services. Emergency medical services are on site and are ready to assist you where need be. There are no planned alarms for today, the 5th of November, 2019. And should there be, ladies and gentlemen, an alarm, please note that it is not an emergency drill. I will repeat. There are no planned alarms for today, the 5th of November, 2019. Please note, if there is an alarm, it is not an emergency drill. Safety teams from the fairgrounds team, as well as the execution team, are available to assist you in any event of emergency. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Botswana, Dr. Mokwezi Eric Gabizu Masisi, and the First Lady of the Republic of Botswana, Mrs. Nell Jane Masisi. Your Excellency's former Presidents of the Republic of Botswana, Dr. Sereze Ian Kama and Dr. Festus Khuntebani Mokhaye, 
honorable ministers here present. This includes honorable Diamantino Dasvede, Minister of Mineral Resources and Petroleum of the Republic of Angola, Honorable Ipod Mboli Fartan, Minister of Mines and Geology, Central Africa Republic, Honorable Tom Alwendo, Minister of Mines and Energy, the Republic of Namibia, Honorable Kekezo Sillo, Minister of Mining of the Kingdom of Lesotho, Members of Parliament here present, Chairman of Nkluyadio Kosi, Permanent Secretary to the President, Attorney General Advocate Abraham Gietzade, Heads of Diplomatic Corps, Heads of International Organizations, Board of Directors of the Botswana Diamond Trading Company Botswana and the De Beers Group, the Chief Executive Officer of the De Beers Group, Mr. Bruce Cleaver, the Commander of the BDF and the Commissioner of the Police, Ladies and gentlemen, senior government officials, distinguished guests, allow me this morning to say all protocol observed. Collaboration, cluster development, consumer, and community. These are the four C's of the diamond ecosystem that will, for the next day, structure fundamental conversations and bear witness to the tremendous work accomplished but more so bring the testimonies of each and every single individual in this room to reflect, learn, share, and more importantly, to grow. Individuals who are part of teams, and in the bigger picture, individuals who are part of organizations that play a critical role in the diamond value chain. The De Beers Diamond Conference of 2019 may have seemingly brought together a thousand individuals in this very room today. However, all here present today represent and carry with them the hearts and the lives of the people, of the millions of people, both young and old, across the world, who have experienced the true meaning of the infinite value of a diamond in various ways. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure and humbling pleasure to welcome you to the 2019 De Beers Diamond Conference this morning as I direct proceedings. My name is Pirola Ramasedi. Where better to host this transformative conversation than the diamond capital of the world, and even more, the cradle of humankind, the Republic of Bazan. I trust that it is befitting for me to say to those who have traveled into this beautiful and peaceful republic and land of ours, Botswana, to say a very warm welcome home. Honorable Minister of Mineral Resources, Green Technology and Energy Security, Botswana. Honorable Leopold Mboli Fatran, Minister of Mines and Geology, Central African Republic. Honorable Tom Elwindo, Minister of Mines and Energy, Namibia. Honorable Keketso Selo, Minister of Mining, Lesotho. Honorable Dr. Mori Manyan, Minister of Mines and Mineral Resources, Sierra Leone. Members of Parliament here present, Permanent Secretary to the President. Your Worship, the Mayor of Khabaroni. Ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. Good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome to the 2019 Diamond Conference here in Botswana. It's great to be back in Botswana again as the country embarks on the next chapter of its outstanding development story. And it's really thrilling for us to host our fifth annual Diamond Conference here in Gaborone alongside our government partners. Over the past few years at this conference, we've addressed some of the key questions relating to the diamond sector and its significance to producing countries such as Botswana. Today, we look at a range of questions that are vital to all of our futures in an ever faster changing world. How has the diamond industry managed to sustain its success over the years? Why has Botswana managed to generate so much diamond success when some other countries have struggled to maximize the benefit of their diamonds? And importantly, what will be important in the future if we are to maintain this success? Now the answer, as is often the case with simple sounding questions, is rather complex. 
Success requires a combination of many different things, all of which depend on the great efforts of a significant number of people. At this year's event, we will seek to explore some of these key ingredients for success in more detail and investigate what we need to consider for the future. You know we love talking about the four C's in the diamond industry, and today we'll be examining the future for the lens of what you might call the four C's of success for the diamond ecosystem. Consumers, communities, cluster development, and collaboration. These four C's are important because it is only by understanding the consumer and can't find insight into what we need to think about in order to drive further positive development. And I think this is even more important because you will all agree with me, the world is changing faster and faster. We're seeing significant changes in technology, in social norms, in attitudes, in consumer behaviors. And that leads me to think we are standing on the cusp of a new diamond world. I'm often asked what the new diamond world will look like. And of course, I don't know any better than any of you, but I can offer a few suggestions as to what I think it will look like. First, I really believe that it is a world for all of us of considerable opportunity, if we make the right choices and if we make the right investments. Because the long-term fundamentals of the diamond business are just as good today as they were 10 and 20. Millennials, Generation Z, are, you may not know, already the largest cohort of diamond buyers in the world. They are reaching financial maturity. Female self-purchase has become a much bigger market than it used to be. Connected world of insights and innovation. So I think we all need to understand better the interaction between every part of the diamond value chain, from our consumers at the one end, all the way the, through the pipeline to mining, better than we ever have before. I think the new diamond world will also be one in which consumers have absolute trust in the product efficiency and increased technological innovation. So I think our focus here must be on developing and growing industrial clusters that support the developments that will enable the diamond sector to compete with other fast moving industries. And as a result of all of this, the new diamond world will also focus on bringing innovative, ethical, and interesting products to consumers from brands that they are proud of. Collaboration has underpinned the diamond industry's success for many decades, and I'm very confident this is one thing that will not change. There are many forms of collaboration that I think will be necessary in the new diamond world. For example, collaborating to ensure mutually beneficial relationships for communities and businesses, collaborating with to maintain this long lasting and meaningful set of relationships we've had that form the bedrock of the entire diamond industry. And so today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm both honored and privileged and humbled to be able to be joined today by someone as I, who I regard and we regard of, as an exemplar as how to make a success of this last partnership in the new diamond world. His Excellency President Masisi. Earlier this year... Earlier this year, I was very privileged to share a rare opportunity in Las Vegas to be joined on stage at what is the world's leading diamond trade show by His Excellency. And along with the rest of the audience, I had the chance to hear his outstandingly eloquent exposition of what diamonds actually mean to a country like Botswana. And of course, following another shining example of Botswana's strong democratic process and free and fair elections not 10 days ago, His Excellency will now lead Botswana into her next chapter and shape and deliver the future for Botswana into the future. For our part at the De Beers Group, we are inspired by His Excellency's vision for establishing a knowledge-based economy in Botswana as in fact it fits perfectly with both the needs of Botswana and I think as you heard me say our view on the needs of the sector. Diamonds will continue of course to play a central role in Botswana's ongoing development and so to me this is both a logical and a creative approach to combining the requirements of industry leadership and statesmanship. As Botswana's dedicated partner for just over 50 years I'm proud to say that every man and woman in the De Beers group is committed to turning His Excellency's vision for a nation into a lasting reality. Ladies and gentlemen, it therefore gives me enormous pleasure to welcome on stage President Mkhwetsi Masisi.
Thank you very much. Kindly be seated. I can assure you I didn't pay Bruce a dime for those words. <laughs> Director of Ceremonies, the First Lady of the Republic of Botswana, and my dear wife, Neo Jane Masisi, Your Excellencies, the former President of the Republic of Botswana, Dr. Festus Mohai, and Lieutenant General Dr. Sarazza Kama Ian Kama, the Minister of Mines and Geology, Honorable Mboli Fatran Leopold from the Central African Republic, the Minister of Mines and Energy, Honorable Thomas Alwindo from the Republic of Namibia, Honorable Members of Parliament, present, Honorable Councillors, present, the Acting Permanent Secretary to the President, Mr. Elias Mahosi, the De Beers Group Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Bruce Cleaver and your team, your Excellencies, Heads of Diplomatic Missions and International Organizations, Chairman of the De Beers Group in Botswana and Resident Director, Mr. Morocco, De Beers Group Executive Committee, the De Beers Site Holders and Accredited Buyers, the De Botswana and the Diamond Trading Company, Botswana Board of Directors, De Beers Global Site Holder Sales Executive Committee, Captains of Industry, my dear friend Mutusi, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, a very good morning to you all. It gives me enormous pleasure this morning to be amongst you at this very special occasion to reflect on the significance of our diamonds to the socio-economic development of our country, Botswana. From the outset, I also wish to welcome all the participants at this conference, particularly those who are from outside Botswana. This conference is particularly special in that it comes just some days, as Bruce said, after the people of Botswana exercise their free democratic right to elect a new government, thus giving us a fresh mandate to drive our country towards a more sustainable and inclusive economy for the next five years. To this end, my government has pledged to lead this country to its next stage of transformation, which is aimed at graduating our nation from middle income status to high income status. This transformation will be guided by the agenda of creating a knowledge-based economy whose aim is to migrate our economy from its heavy reliance on natural resources, especially diamonds. I am well aware of the saying that a diamond is forever which is true in all respects relating to the sales and the marketing of these precious stones. But I'm also alive to the fact that diamond mining will not last forever. As such, I strongly believe that we should intensify our efforts to broaden our economic base around diamond mining and beyond so that we fully exploit our rich, by also fully exploiting our rich human capital already developed and that which is to be developed. In this regard, we should work towards having a private sector-led and export-focused economy that will enable us to create sustainable jobs. This will indeed go a long way in ensuring that we create sustainable, vibrant, and diversified mineral sector that is integrated into other sectors of the economy as espoused in our national long-term vision 2036. Ladies and gentlemen, I am glad to note that the 2019 Diamond Conference coincides with a historic milestone. As you all may be aware, the government of Botswana and the De Beers Group are this year celebrating the golden jubilee of their partnership as embodied by the De Botswana Mining Company. This partnership has grown from strength to strength over the past 50 years, and in the process propelling Botswana 
from being one of the poorest countries in the world at independence to one of the most successful economies in sub-Saharan Africa today. Together, Botswana and De Beers, we have built an economy which has helped transform our country to a special category of prudently run and managed economies in the world. That is why my government and De Beers are in negotiations for the next sales agreement, which is set to continue when the current one expires in 2020. Call it a revitalization or a near renewal of vows, so to speak, as I hope you all do who are married. I would also like to underscore the significance of the chosen theme for this year's conference, which is titled The Four C's of Success for the Diamond Ecosystem, which are consumer, community, commercial, and collaboration. This theme reflects how we have managed our diamond industry over the years and also give us, gives us an impetus to our resolve to continue with our efforts to maximize on the sustainability of the industry for generations to come. This conference, therefore, should discuss these four derivatives with a view to chart a new path to success as well as to protect the legacy which we have collectively built over the years. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, with reference to the first C, being consumer, the diamond industry must take cognizance of the ever-changing and shifting consumer landscape across the world. Given the modern age of information and communication technology, consumer tastes and trends are easily influenced. Coming from an election, you ask me. <laughs> Social media plays an important role in influencing purchasing decisions of consumers, and therefore our industry practices and cultures must take this into consideration in responding to the new reality. Furthermore, consumers are becoming increasingly aware of international social issues and they are demanding more responsible business practices. As such, consumer behavior is of paramount importance to my government and to De Beers, which calls for careful utilization of existing technologies and the creation of new ones to respond to the emerging diamond consumption patterns. Ladies and gentlemen, technology presents infinite opportunities to address factors that affect the commercial prospects within the diamond industry. I am aware that De Beers, not too long ago, announced the intention to create Tracer, a blockchain ledger for tracing dime stones from the point they are mined right up to when they are sold. I believe this that this hall is full of men and women with their worth it all to ensure that the industry retains its vibrant and sustained commercial lustre. Allow me at this stage, Director of Ceremonies, to make mention of the Kimberley Process Certification Scheme, which has been credited with a significant reduction in diamonds from areas of conflict. It is a dem demonstration of how government, the private sector, and civil society are working together to stem the flow of diamonds from areas of conflict and restore consumer confidence in the product. This conference, therefore, in response to the second C, being collaboration, should interrogate the value of the existing collaborative relationships to address shared risks that impact the diamond industry. Although the Kimberley process certification is credited with significantly curbing the trade in diamonds from areas of conflict, we need to constantly review our processes to keep them in sync with changing global realities and completely eliminate modern day diamond mining related criminal activities. I'm also happy to note that the third C is for community, which speaks to the importance of establishing a community based approach that enhances the sustainability of the diamond industry. This is even more significant as last year's conference focused on the sustainable diamond production and the growth of the communities where diamond companies operate and how they can honor their licenses 
to operate and create jobs. We must therefore strive to ensure that the communities within those areas, within whose areas we are mining our diamonds, are part of the process in the diamond value chain. In this regard, we have an obligation to motivate favorable development policies and robust business practices which accommodate the interests of these communities in the whole scheme of diamond mining and production. To this end, I'm happy to note that De Beers pledges to work responsibly to make sure that where diamonds are found, they play an important role in creating jobs, improving education and health care, as well as building the necessary infrastructure to aid development efforts of the government and other stakeholders. Ladies and gentlemen, the fourth C, which is commercial, seeks to direct this conference to explore new opportunities to create a self-regulating and an evidence-based innovation pipeline that will support commercial longevity of diamond mining in the current and future global context. Expert projections indicate that the demand for natural rough diamonds is expected to remain stable or only show a slight annual growth through to around 2030. This and other concerns facing the diamond industry and its commercial health deserves our attention and must be fully addressed. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, with those four C's, I am confident that this conference will live up to its expectations. I also want to urge all industry players here today to develop better ways of shaping an industry which is not only vibrant and profitable, but also contributes to the sustainability of the economies of our partner communities. Ladies and gentlemen, I also wish to remind you that full beneficiation within the diamond industry in Botswana remains a key objective of my country's diversification drive. It is indisputable that diamonds are a key contributor to Botswana's economy. This means that a single industrial sector plays a remarkably important role for us as a nation. Diamonds are even more important to our international trade, representing more than 60% of our export value. In this respect, government has developed a diamond beneficiation strategy to enable citizen participation in the diamond value chain. Among other things, this strategy will equip citizens with appropriate industry skills, general management and leadership skills, as well as incubate citizen businesses. As I mentioned at last year's conference, we need to move further up the pipeline to jewelry, manufacturing, and retail. Participation at these upmarket levels of the pipeline, however small, will go a long way in promoting the development of Khaburoni as a diamond city and Botswana as the number one diamond destination. As I conclude my remarks, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Bruce Cleaver, particularly, and your team, for organizing this conference and availing the necessary resources to make it happen. I am confident that your deliberations on the thematic issues which the conference seeks to address will receive their fair share of attention to ensure that it achieves its intended objectives. And for those of you visiting us for the first time, the cradle of humankind, if you heard, you heard. Botswana is a beautiful country, still. Therefore, take time to treat yourselves to the country's unique and rare sights, its rare tastes, sounds, and ambience before you return to your respective countries. With these few remarks, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is now my distinct honor uh, to declare that the 2019 Diamond Conference is officially open, and I thank you for your attention. Pula.
Ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellency the President of the Republic of Botswana, we thank you for those remarks that, ha that have outlined in a 